Matthias. Welcome, Eric. ¿Con este? ¿Sí? ¿Sí? Oh, bueno, buenos días. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Eric Diaz. I am the engineering part of Cisco Meraki, and I deal with the public sector throughout the country. I was born in Mexico City. Today I will be speaking about the concept of Meraki in the public sector. We we'll just have a few slides and then we'll have an interactive session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask as I go along. It could be in Spanish or in English. Meraki is an area that offers cloud-based solutions that is focused on providing solutions to different verticals. And one of the powerful things is in the public sector, both in government agencies, in the academia, or in health organizations. So we offer different solutions to speed up care, education, or the health of the individuals. Let me I'll make a brief introduction to Meraki, followed by a demo online. The network set up in the event is a Meraki network. This is with Cisco Meraki devices. Meraki has a history that began in 2006. They started providing cloud-based solutions, providing access points with our third-party Wi-Fi access points. And then they developed their own product. And as from 2012, it was acquired by Cisco. After that, we extended the portfolio of access points and switches. We incorporated Internet of Things, such as cameras. The cameras are as video surveillance solutions, but they are analytics solutions to respond to the needs of the citizens and today, we have a scalable architecture that is also secure. Today, Cisco decided to have Meraki as the cloud-based platform for the products. 
for the so this is Cisco's evolution in the cloud for the access option. Now, how does this operate in the application level? At the application level, we have the monitoring platform and also the administration part, which is the Meraki dashboard. You'll often listen to the dashboard. That is where we do provisioning, configuration, and network operation. On the right, you see the solutions. In recent years, you have heard a common term, which is that of software-defined networks. So there we have software-defined one or SD1. And this uh, Meraki platform is a software-defined platform. So it's used, it's, it's used by the link between the developers and the IT uh, engineers, so they develop platforms to speak with Meraki and to then expand other parameters or to reflect information that the dashboard might not have immediately, or also through partners that already develop these applications and have additional analytics. At the bottom, we see the hardware, the devices. Meraki started doing Wi-Fi. Today we have, have Wi-Fi 6E that has six gigas, and Ifetel already approved the low segment for operation in Mexico. So in Wi-Fi, in the new networks, consider using this six giga band because it is almost virgin in terms of Wi-Fi. The switching platform, I think switching is a backbone of the networks. There are other platforms such as Security or SD1, which is Ledge, which is to connect to the one. And you have the cellular gateways. With the launch of the 5G last year, the potential of 5G wireless networks at mobile level is very, very powerful. We also have cameras. Solutions, solution, and these cameras are linked to probes. The probes are used for the Internet of Things to monitor opening, closing of doors. And now, in the case of COVID, they also check the air quality, detect mitral particles, environmental noise, things that can make our daily life more complicated, and this allows us to measure things and improve the situations. And this is very important. Many of us were not prepared for COVID. I think nobody was prepared for COVID. Never, none of you had ever experienced a pandemic. Nobody worked comfortably remotely, but we did learn a lot from these unfortunate events. Cloud management, beyond this being uh, something in fashion, is a need. And I invite you to reflect on something. How many of you would turn off your video streaming service? Many of you would say you wouldn't do so. And this is because of the ease of use and how versatile this cloud service is. Almost all of us use cloud-based cloud services at home, particularly with the way we work on a daily basis. So the cloud can be accessed almost from any location. It is flexible, and we can also control the all networking solutions or IoT that you have in your work environment. Now, why is this so important for the public sector in Mexico? Normally, the administration resources for IT, IoT, and all the IT network are managed by only few people. So it's important that this can be accessed from anywhere and comfortably and in an easy way. We have a command line that is very valid, and we're evolving towards a more intuitive platform, which is cloud-based. So what do we need? There are two components. We need the hardware, and at networking level, this is very important. We need the hardware for purpose of connectivity, and we also need the license. This is to have access to the dashboard and have all these network facilities, including services. A import very important thing is that today, Meraki is a company that belongs to Cisco. The portfolio starts becoming integrated, the cloud-based solutions become condensed, and we also have developers. Most of you who come from the academia 
have developers so those bright students can develop platforms to interact with Meraki. So this is a totally open API. We will now make a demo. I think I will now have to change the format of my display. Just a minute, please. I won't be able to see it if I do it in this way. Let me check once again. Perdón por la interrupción. Sorry for the interruption. So that's the access to uh, this is the network uh, in uh, San Francisco, California, and around the world. This is one of the networks. So what you have first in the dashboard is an organization. That organization, in the case of Minaka, is the production network. It's global, and I have multiple networks. The uh, Miraki, the advantage of Miraki is even if you don't have your machine with you, you can claim through your serial or scanning uh, from your device or your phone, and you can configure it even before you receive it. So imagine that you have a deployment of wireless uh, network uh, uh, at a state level. You can configure it even before the uh, machine is uh, shipped uh, from uh, the uh, country of origin, which could be the United States. So if you want to set up the network, once the uh, uh, machines are in line, they have vi visibility of monitoring and the configuration of the device, right? Here you have a list of the devices. You can click on any of them. And you start and you see the status and the connections of the clients associated to it. You also have geolocation, and that is for all our network. This is an access point. These are the clients connected, and this is the configuration. Here you have access to uh, simple uh, configuration and uh, with for IPv6. You can see uh, in daily digit details. In, in these events of high uh, density, ra uh, radio frequency is very important, and it's important for the devices to understand the dynamic of uh, the uh, distribution of channels or fixed channels and the frequencies today the device only works with 2.4 but I talked of Wi-Fi 60 and that gives you a new band of 6 gig I imagine that you open a new uh, highway and all the saturation will receive a good uh, uh, aspirin for many years uh, to improve the capacity in one uh, only one device 
La capacidad de una red es the capacity of a network in the cloud goes well beyond. How many of you, maybe if you've been in the market for 10 years, maybe you saw an issue that you didn't know the topology of your network and why? Because you would acquire the products, you would add them, and at a time you lost and you didn't know how those devices, all those devices were connected. One of the advantages of Mirake is that there's an auto discovery of the topology and it is automatically reflected without you connecting them. Automatically, you discover, it discovers that here you have an IDF with uh, several switches and that IDF uh, has many APs connected and from there you can go to the device to configure it and to monitor it. But let me tell you something that it may be even more valuable than all the effort that we do uh, every day to configure. For instance, here you have an issue of um, citizen attention, uh, service to citizens. What do users see? Why? What do they see in the internet? Why should I deliver internet to a school or to a public uh, center? Uh, beyond work, am I going to block uh, contents for uh, uh, adults? Am I going to allow streaming? Am I going to reduce it? What are users doing? How do I determine? the characteristics of my network and you see that you can see and classify the entire traffic of the network just by buying your first point of access and making it operate it's very powerful imagine everything you had to do years ago uh, um, with multiple servers and develop protocols for applications and especially re reflecting them in a single uh, control and monitoring uh, uh, panel. That is what Mirake does. When you want to open a new node, imagine that it's a hospital. Let's put a new public hospital here first. I want to connect to the one. How am I going to do that with different links? But there's also a cost issue. Maybe I want to connect through the internet. And you start thinking of many boxes with different solutions or a single one. It may be as you want. It may be a firewall security box or a router, a traditional one, right? So the important thing is for you to see the device and start managing all those functions and you want in just one focus point. And I haven't moved from uh, the application I was talking of switching and now connectivity as you want. And in the SD1, for instance, the fact that you can do profiling of the traffic filtering layer three, layer seven in the application, blocking or allowing in, reducing bandwidth for non-critical apps in the institution to expand it for critical for, uh, features and give a better quality of service. And that is down by traffic shaping, having several one uh, so that I can have a cost benefit idea. So this allows you to do something very powerful that in the past we couldn't do as a user. It removes the service provider definition of the service level agreement and it delivers to you so that you can decide that you, if you can measure the efficiency of your links and your cost and I'm going to see what I is convenient. So start in doing using those media and you have the control in an administration layer. That is done by Miraculous DNS uh, solution. So in addition to that, imagine a school again. Schools normally have two types of users of networks. The and uh, the uh, uh, administrative sector and the students, will they have the same services? No. The administrative uh, sector has uh, 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 can see certain things and students uh, exams and students uh, teachers see the exams and students have uh, teaching material so you can manage you the the mobile device manager will help you manage that maybe the teacher 
was given a device by the school, but the school can control that device and say, for instance, you're only going to install these solutions and you have different uh, OSs. You may have Mac OS, you IDS, if it's a, a mobile and Android or Windows, the, you, to having the smart uh, um, uh, uh, software to allow or to deny what to install based on labels, having a store from where you can download uh, the apps of uh, public institutions, and also if you're stolen the device, being able to clear it. And again, in the same platform. So here we are talking of a solution of the public sector where you have the potential of giving the entire internet network and assigning quality of service for the apps to flow correctly and even reach the level of the device, not just for to give an antivirus or an IPS, but also to control what the device does and to prevent any uh, data theft. When uh, an institution loses a device, the minor cost may be losing the the hardware, the tablet, uh, it's, uh, it's with the contents, and we can protect that with uh, the um, with this uh, uh, capability. So uh, here I have this as a classroom, and I want to see how my students moved, and the red areas are high concentration of users, and they may be at a distance under 1.5 meters, and I start seeing that maybe that is harmful. So I want to see the red density dots and start scattering them, telling them they can't be so close to each other. But you say, Eddie, but maybe what you are doing that only in wireless. No, there are video surveillance uh, uh, features that that are also solutions of video analytics where in the same dashboard I can have different video walls that are recording the camera in an NDR or in the cloud, a flexible solution. I no longer call it a closed circuit because it's not a closed circuit. It's really an open circuit of analytics where maybe I can verify the times with the densest traffic in the staircases. I may, I may say, well, I want to check an area of movement of interest, that's a staircase, and I want to do it with artificial intelligence at, two, at noon. Yesterday, for instance, because if I have a AI, I can also understand some words. And indeed, I can see that yesterday I had certain events, and there you see people moving uh, in stairs, and I can detect whether it was a person or a vehicle. Now, if you start looking at it that way, I can see the users, I can see the apps that are running, I can monitor them, their movement through Wi-Fi or cameras, but it goes even beyond that. I may have sensors, and in that sensor part, I may have lifts, elevators, uh, sensors measuring the quality of air, temperature, opening and closure of doors, humidity, detection of drops. And I can check, maybe, I can check a door sensor, let's, let's add it, to tell us, I go to the sensor and I can see in the sense, I can see the events the sensor detected during the day, opening and closure of doors, and I go to an event of opening and closure of a certain door and see the video when it's happen when the event is happening because it has a camera tethered to the sensor. So all that can be done. It's a uh, now it's taking some time because of Wi-Fi, but let's look for one. As I have too many, I need to know the name by heart, which I don't know, but I can look for something more specific as coffee bar.
And for instance, here I can see events, temperature events, for instance, here now it's very hot. Maybe some days ago, people were warned about uh, leaving at certain hours, and I can trigger alerts. So you can be monitoring a data center or a, a room like this, and not just see temperature, but also levels of quality of air. Are we doing fine? No doubt so far. However, what happens in a network? Usually you speak of switch and access points and it goes beyond it. That you may have a business accelerator of institution of the citizens so that your networking scheme may be good to improve something. Maybe the quality of an app, maybe the satisfaction of uh, people. So, now we're seeing the apps. It's very important to look at the apps because there are critical apps of the institutions, of the school, of the hospital. So it's important for you to have that engine, that visual engine, uh, downloading all the apps so that you may see the, the drop in the app and where the problem is. Raise your hands. How many of you are devoted to IT in your business? So now, raise your hands. How many of you have been claimed for some problem with the app and they told you it was the network, but it wasn't the network, right? So if you are having problems with Google Drive, I can assure you that the problem is not in the LAN or your device. It's not in the one, but it's in the server, right? Huh? How many hours did you uh, save of troubleshooting? So that's like Telephone Nights uh, of Cisco. It's good to integrate many solutions and to uh, put, uh, um, uh, filtering uh, for filtering contents. We use Umbrella, for instance, or Red Cloud, uh, and all the Talos engine. And IPS, we use a Snort engine. For those of you expert in security, it's an open source, and it's rather old. It's uh, the, the, the pig uh, with wings, very funny. So these solutions become integrated to provide this facility for networking purposes. But it is in our minds to think of the ideas, capacities that we can split. But we can say, well, there's something you didn't show me, or there are also things that we do not do. Now, remember, we said at the beginning, we spoke about software defined. Now, I know many of you, if you're not developers, feel the pressure to learn about XML and JSON and Python. This is because they speak about API and integration with third-party applications. So at least want to give the developer this. And the best thing is to have a platform where you can tell them, I'm going to give you my entire Meraki dashboard API so you can start work with a postman and then send out, for example, I want to look at the parameters of my organization. Here you enter the parameters, the data of your organization, and I'm going to give you an output. And this is a programming environment for and JSON for the development. So they're going to make a call to my dashboard to have instructions, just read-only instructions or write-only. And so a 100% in-house platform was provided to have the traceability of individuals between different municipalities. Although we can see it here and we can check how the Wi-Fi is, the city of the Wi-Fi, but we can see that this individual moved from municipality one to municipality B, and this was done three times a day. Now think about the potential this has regarding services provided to the citizens. Traffic, for example, in time and if movements, and also regarding public security. So this is a scenario we have in Meraki. This is a very open platform. And to finish and to leave time for questions, I said something at the beginning. I said, maybe, well, how many of you know Cisco? Cisco, do you know Cisco? How many of you know Meraki? 
So Meraki is part of Cisco, but you see that Meraki's philosophy is to facilitate things. I think some of you have consoles, ally consoles, and many of you have tried Meraki. And I can assure you that in initially thought how easy it is to use Meraki. And this ease of use was not invented or designed by Cisco. There were three companies in the market like Apple who prepared easy to use devices that became fashion and for many users these became a need. And this is because the ease, ease of use. So Cisco once again decided that Meraki should be the default cloud access platform. So all those you have new generation catalysis switches, 9,200, 9,300, 9,500, can set this up in Meraki's dashboard, provided you have the DNA license. So you can set this up, you can download them and configure them. You can even do this tomorrow. And if you have a license that is valid, this won't cost anything. This is so that you can start using the platform and can be convinced that the cloud platforms are the monitoring solution for administration in the entire industry. So that is where we are moving. Sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't. But let me ask you something to the reflection we are making here. How many of you would remove Netflix, Cloud or Prime from your homes and change this? for Blu-ray with 100 discs. Who would do that? Show of hands. One person would do it out of 300. Why is this so? Because of the ease of use and how versatile is you no longer start thinking about the ownership of that asset, which is valuable, and you start thinking more in the experience. And of course, you have needs for subscriptions and for the use of the internet, but at the end of the day, in our homes and in our organizations, we are using internet links with much better levels of service and much better bandwidth. So we not only deal with data, but we also have the entertainment applications at the level of education. We provide streaming. We can see how a professor in France is having operating and 4K for university students. So this is why connectivity has evolved so much. And that is why we speak about IPv6, because the scalability of IPv4 is coming to an end. So we have to have networks that are prepared for IPv6, as you can see over here. So we have configuration here for IPv6. So this is the present and the future. So I'd like to leave 10 minutes for Q&A. So please raise your hands if you have any questions, your hand if you have any question, questions. Well, I thought there were going to be more questions. Hello. As I was saying, this is a hybrid event, and I have two questions from remote participants. There is a question from Luis Daniel Iturbide Ramirez, who's asking, currently, what are the devices, for example, mobile phones, laptops, and smartphones can use 6E Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi 6E, well, this is very new, only the high-end devices from some vendors are ready for 6E Wi-Fi like Android and some Androids from leading companies such as Samsung. And this is because 6E Wi-Fi is not only uh, technology for transmission, but also uses 6 giga transmissions. Now, beyond the type of mobile phone, is that the new generation laptops now are ready with 6E Wi-Fi. And let me expand. In Mexico, whether for good or for bad, and the new technologies are triggered by mobile providers because the major mobile phone companies start promoting 6E Wi-Fi 
options, and sometimes because out of fashion, but others out of need, start acquiring these devices and start asking, can I connect with 6E or 5G? So if the answer is no, customs are not satisfied. So as soon as we see the publicity of these companies, this will then explode. So if the access point costs the same to 6E and to the normal one, you will opt for 6E. Thank you. I have more questions. Genoveva Espejo, she's asked, can Cisco Meraki be integrated with Cisco Nexus 9000 devices? These are SDN solutions that are separate solutions but can become integrated. Let me give you a brief example. The Cisco Nexus is a data center switch, and it has its own management platform in SDN, but there are many work networks, particularly in the private sector, that need to have a high scalability at core level or at data center connectivity. So what we do is to include in the distribution part or in the Meraki, we include the Nexus on top. So today, this is not managed on the same dashboard, but it is already included in the dashboard to include not Nexus, but to do modular catalyst. So this will become integrated. We don't have a date established yet. There are no more questions online. Any questions from people here in the room? No questions. So thank you very much, Eric. Great demo. Well, thanks to you for this opportunity.